Power of the elements. Should you invest or should you not? That is the big question of this video. Should you get pre-sales? Should you not? Should you just wait till they're on TCG Player instead of going through eBay? And yes, your boy got a big old haircut of three all over because it's hot as hell here in Florida. Let's dive on into it, shall we? as well just say thank y'all so much for 800 subscribers because currently we're two away from 800 but i feel like if i just thank you now then maybe it'll get there and if you aren't subscribed don't be like the big percentage of people that i don't want to say aren't subscribed so smash the subscribe button so that we can get to our dream of 1000 subscribers so let's talk about pre-sales here for power of the omens and whether or not you should invest in in the deck. I'm looking at pre-sales here right now on eBay because as of the recording of this video, there are not pre-sales on TCG Player. However, eBay does have cheaper prices for sealed product compared to TCG Player. I'm looking at TCG Player right now and Power of the Elements booster packs are going for $3.33 a piece and boxes are at the $74.88 mark, very close to $75. Meanwhile, you look over here at eBay and you're looking at <laughs> $69.69 for the sponsored. $64.95, 648 have sold. So you're looking at 65 for a box. That's not bad at all. Pre-sales for Sprite stuff. I'm going to have to get used to saying Sprite now instead of Splite. You're looking at $70 for blues. They're secret rares. I, th I think the pre-sale prices for the meta decks are going to be very high. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, I'm seeing other Power of the Elements boxes at 69s. Uh, another one here for $64.99, $65. Um, starters are 30s. Elves are 30s. Uh, gigantic spikes are 25 all those cards i just mentioned are ultra um ultimate slayer is a secret rare that's 70 dollars. 75 for box 30 for gigantic spike a dollar 87 for favorite contact 30 dollars for the kirakara divine carnet which is like the reverse nabiru thing for every monster that activated their effects you contribute them off to summon it it's it's kind of booty, honestly, in my opinion. Someone's trying to sell a case out here. It's their last one for $900 of Power of the Elements. No fucking thank you. <laughs> so all of this to say that, yes, you should definitely invest in Power of the Elements. If you have the money to blow and money is just burning a hole in your wallet, you need to go and get a case of Power of the Elements if you can afford it. I would say potentially get even two cases. I am personally only getting one case, which we will be opening on the channel, shameless plug. And we're also getting a case of Tactical Masters, which is the only reason why I'm not getting two cases of Power of the Elements is just because I want to get a case of Tactical Masters so I can get the Mr. Rune stuff, depending on how much Mr. Rune costs for like pre-sale and things like that. But when it comes to pre-sales, this is really my rule of thumb when it comes to pre-sales just for any Yu-Gi-Oh, whether it's singles or product. The pre-sales are always going to be high as fuck. You know, I was thinking that Therions were going to be really good coming out of Dimension Force. I was dropping five bucks a piece on Argeo systems. Now they're like, what, fucking 50 cents for an Ultra? Like, I lost money. Illegal Knights were like 20s on pre-sales. Now they're like threes. So with Splite Blues being, excuse me, $70... I think that that's going to drop to at least 40, 50 bucks. We see a incredible Ecclesias. I think on pre-sale, they were 70, 80, 90 bucks, something like that. Now they're chilling at like the 50 to 55 range. Moyes have dropped like a rock. They're down to 20s. Granted, they just won the national championship, but still the fact remains is that these cards are going to be higher priced before the set is out because people want to get that money quick. You know, you look at something like Splite Starter, that's an ultra, at $30, how do you know it's not going to pull an endless Argeo system and be fucking 50 cents to a dollar? Now, you can make the argument, well, Splite's going to be a tier one deck and Therions weren't, blah, 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 blah. I get that, but it's still not a risk, especially for 30 bucks a piece I'm willing to take, especially when I know I'm getting a case. And you can make the argument, yeah, you know you're getting a case, so you know that you're going to be getting a lot of stuff, but for someone who just wants to get the cards that they need... I don't really feel like you're getting very good value, uh, specifically on Splite or Sprite, when it comes to pre-sales. You know, you're talking, you need three Sprite starters, that's 90 bucks. Three Sprite Blues, that's 70 a piece. So, 70, 210 plus 90, you're looking at $300. You need at least two Elves, that's another 60. You need at least two Gigantic Splites, that's another basically 50 to 60 bucks. You're talking over $400 at that point. And it, let's say you want to place that Ultimate Slayers. Well, now you're looking at 70 bones a piece. That's a lot. And you start getting into case value territory that 
really you might as well just buy a case at that point because you just get more value. You know, uh, a place that I sell a lot of my cards to, especially like bulk commons and things like that, is Cool Stuff Games. I'm not affiliated with Cool Stuff. I'm just telling you what I use in case anyone has like a Cool Stuff Games in their area or you want to ship in your cards via the mail and they send you a check, whatever. I'm not affiliated with them. This is just who I primarily go to. And they're also franchised at a few different locations. But Cool Stuff, for a time, they were offering $18 a piece for every 1,000 commons of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They've dropped it to 15 probably because of inflation or because they want to make better profit, I guess. I don't know, but it used to be 18. Now it's 15, which is not terrible. If you buy a case, you're guaranteed over 2000 commons. So, you know, you're at least going to be making $30 back on the commons. Uh, you know, even if you were to just keep a couple hundred commons and then throw 2000 at them, you also have, you know, the high end value cards that they're going to be buying on day one. If you have players in your area that need cards, there's more value for you. And that kind of gets into more the, I guess, side hustle side of things where, you know, you're you're trying to offload a bunch of cards and make profit. Whereas me personally, being the competitive player that I am, I'm going to be holding on to splites. I'm going to be holding on to tier elements. And I think you should do this as well, even if you don't plan on playing it. Because remember, in a few months, we get that Magnificent Mavens, which should have the mill support that uh, tier elements will use to be even better. You know, the Aigido, the Keldeo, the Mudo, the Exchange of the Spirit stuff. When we get that, tier elements will be even better. And I am I can almost guarantee them to you, actually I can 100% guarantee them to you, that tier elements are not going to have any kind of reprint from that point. So you're going to have a set like Power of the Elements that may be out of circulation at that point come like December when we get the stuff that all of a sudden the tier element stuff starts going up in price because now we have this new mill support that people want to play it in tier elements. So that is something to keep in mind as well. You know, it may be a while, but you know, you got to be able to be willing to take that risk or you can just offload it early because who knows what the prices will be then. Maybe the deck won't pan out like we hope it will. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's sort of the risk you take, but to get a case and to be guaranteed, number one, a starlight, number two, to get a bunch of the shit that you will probably need because this is a rise of the duelist level set like it's really fucking good um there's nothing wrong with investing in a case there's nothing wrong with investing in singles after they come out i feel like pre-sales are just they're a big time miss yes you have those opportunities where you can make profit you know you look at something like i think even small world i think small world was very low on pre-sales and for a while, it jumped up to like 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks. It just kept on going because everybody wanted to use Small World. Now it's kind of dropped down. It's more like, I think, the 15 to 20 range. So you have situations like that. And who knows? Maybe starters at 30s for pre sale, maybe they'll go up to 70. Maybe it turns out that out of a case, you only pull two starters. I mean, shit, in my Burst of Destiny case, I pulled three Moyes, four DPEs, and four Ecclesias. And only like a couple copies of another card I was looking for. I can't remember what the other secrets were in there. But it was really shocking. Um, so I feel like you should really take these pre-sale prices with a grain of salt. You definitely should not be paying more than between $60 to $65 per box. And the fact that you can get them for $65 a piece right now on eBay is fantastic. Um, luckily one of my locals that I go to here in town, I know for a fact, I'll be able to get boxes at 60 to 65 a piece, which is not terrible. Um, but worse come to worse, if I needed to use eBay, I could because it's 64 99 a piece. That's so damn good. I mean, you can't, you can't beat that. So guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Are you going to be investing in power of the elements? Are you going to just wait until the set kind of dies down and then pick up what you need? Please. Let me know and thank you again so much for almost 800 subs. I know we're only two away, but I might as well just thank you all now. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.